Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Georgia Highlands College Lady Chargers basketball here. Tony McIntosh with you. And we're getting ready for our starting lineups. We'll take it down to our public address announcer, Doug Walker, with the lineups for both East Georgia State and uh, Georgia Highlands College Chargers. From Grovetown, Augusta, Georgia, Anaya Jones. From Atlanta, Unified, Terry Caldwell. From Wake Cross, Georgia, number 10, Charlize Tree McClendon. From Grovetown and Augusta, Georgia, number 14, Demaya Griffin. And from Atlanta, number 25, Tiana Dismuth. Welcome, everyone, and we're ready to tip it off here. We've got Angel Simmons and Princess Simmons uh, starting for uh, Georgia Highlands. Also, Naomi uh, Barbare and also uh, Jashalan uh, Hat uh, Hatton and uh, Keandra Barfield will be the starting five for the Chargers this afternoon uh, going against uh, the 16-0 and in the conference East Georgia State Lady Bobcats. So this is uh, going to be quite a matchup overall. Uh, the Bobcats are 23 and three, and they've got. Uh, well, as uh, let's put it this way, uh, when one um, one of them's uh, middle name is Tree, uh, they've got a lot of height on this team. So uh, it's going to be a challenge for the uh, Lady Chargers today. But I think they're uh, up for it, and we're getting ready to tip it off here at the Corral. Glad to have you here on a Saturday afternoon. By the way, this is sophomore day. East Georgia College takes the first tip. Jones gets it over to Conwell. Back inside McClendon. They swing it around the home, uh, around the horn. Lost control there for just a minute. Drive to the basket off the glass. No good. Bobcats with the rebound. That is uh, Clarissa McClendon. Averaging 16.2 points per game. Five rebounds. And she's got a field goal percentage of about 57%. So she's a uh, Pretty reliable there inside the paint. Bring it back down and uh, shot block. Great, uh, great defense by the Chargers. Hatton got her hand up there and uh, took it out of McClendon's hands. Rather really knocked it away. That was almost a sure two-pointer there. Just underway here at the corral. The Bobcats, Lady Bobcats are up 2-0. And that's going to be uh, out on Angel Simmons. Simmons threw that one out. Again, it's sophomore day. We've got some of the family members of the uh, sophomores. And I think we got an issue with the ball. I think it uh, has no air. That's what it is. It's a little soft. So the... Coach retrieves and we'll take that to the trainer and they'll take him the back and revive it a little bit, I guess. Two zip is our score right now, just underway here at the corral. They're going to drive 
Dish it off and gets another two buckets there. That's McClendon. She is going to be a handful. Well, her middle name is Tree, so there you go. Princess Simmons out on the far wing. She gets a pick from Hatton. Back over to Hatton, a give and go. She stops. And a trip foul. That's going to be, uh, let's see, who are they going to call this one on? I believe this one is going to be on Griffin. Well, no foul. It's just uh, out of bounds. Long pass inbounds. Angel Simmons is going to bring it back up. Get the screen by Hatton. Over to the near side of Barfield. She's going to drive baseline. Twist, turns, shot, no good. McClendon with the rebound. And here come the Lady Bobcats. 4-0 lead right now. Jones is going to drive. Then dish it off in the corner. Shot, no good. Rebound Chargers. Barfield brings it up the floor. And loses control of the basketball. It goes out of bounds. I think she wanted to stop and throw it back inside, but unfortunately it got away from her. Chargers uh, yet to score this afternoon. Looking to go inside. Instead, they go to the top. Three-point attempt, no good. Rebound, Simmons. Angel. Passes it over to Princess. She's going to drive baseline. Gets off round to Barfield. That three off the back rim. She gets her own rebound. And dishes it off to Princess Simmons. She counts the basket and is going to go to the line to shoot an old-fashioned three. That was a good follow of a shot there by Barfield. So Princess at the line to make this get within one. And she does. Chargers come out and press and force a turnover. And they'll inbound it under uh, right, right in front of the scorer's table. Angel Simmons brings it across the timeline. She's just going to go drive right to the bucket. She's met there by a lady Bobcat, and shot was blocked. And we're going to have a foul on the floor. Demaya Griffin brought that ball across the uh, floor for the Lady Bobcats. Anaya Jones at the top of the key. With McClendon, she gets it off to the far corner. Tried to go inside. Ball taken away. Great defense by Hatton. Princess Simmons gets it to Angel. She's on the far wing. Gets a pick. She's going to drive the lane. Dishes it off. Barfield getting double teamed, but she gets it off the Hatton, and it's going to be out of bounds. That will be Charger basketball with 10 on the shot clock. Simmons throws it up. Angel gets it right at the horse's nose. Seven on the shot clock. And a prayer goes up and a violation, but McClendon's going to bring it across anyway. She got the rebound. Whoa. That was a bit of a, a trip there. Back inside. And there's a foul on. That's going to be called on Angel Simmons. Tiana Disbuke is going to be at the uh, foul line to shoot. 
Checking in the game, Yaz Collins, and also we've got uh, Freeman. Shatea Freeman coming into the game for the Lady Chargers. 4-3, a one-point game. That uh, foul shot goes off the back of the rim. Again, the Bobcats 16-0 in the conference, and they've got uh, the, some, of the, some of the conference's uh, biggest leaders in statistics, like the three-point Strobridge is a 38% shooter. Ball taken away. Looking for a three in the corner. That's going to be off the target. No good. Battle for the rebound underneath. Bobcats come away with it. A little jumper. No good. And they're going to call a jump ball, and McClendon just couldn't get off the floor. She was sitting on the floor the whole time. They rebounded around her, and she couldn't get up. It felt like they were raining on her. But it's going to be uh, Charger basketball because the uh, arrow, possession arrow. All right, Bobcats come out and press. Chargers break it. Little layup's good. That is Naomi Barbary. Oh, and Princess Simmons slapped that one away and got hit. It's going to be, let's see, out on, should have been a backcourt, but not. Knocked out of bounds, and that's uh, out on the Chargers. Yaz Collins battling for that ball. So we're all tied up at five apiece right here. Coach Brooks definitely wanted a backcourt on that one. And Three-point from the wing, no good, in and out. And the Chargers come away with it and clears the puck. <laughs> she just, <laughs> and that's going to go out of bounds. I think that's, I think that was all that uh, Hatton could could do with that ball. When she got the rebound, she couldn't see anybody, so she turned around and just hoisted it down the floor, and it was uh, basically a clearing the puck. And uh, no, for, fortunately, no icing was called. We'll take a break here. We're tied up at five apiece at the crowd. This is Charger basketball. All right, we're back here at the Corral on sophomore day here at Georgia Highlands College, where we are all tied up right now. The uh, conference leading East Georgia State College Lady Bobcats are tied up with the uh, Lady Chargers here at Georgia Highlands College, Floyd campus. And after that media timeout, the uh, Lady Bobcats are going to inbound the basketball. Trying to go down inside, ball's taken away. Here come the Chargers, looking to take the lead for the first time. And there's gonna be a travel. Baraby took one too many steps that time. She's also one of the sophomores, Princess Simmons, uh, Baraby, and uh, Barfield. The Barfield uh, contingency just came in a moment ago, sporting uh, number 15 balloons. Drive lane, no good, and a foul. This will be a two-shot foul, and that's going to go against Hatton. Foul. 
at the four-minute mark, and that one is no good. Hey, you're invited to uh, support the Charger basketball. There's all kinds of opportunities for you to become a member of the Charger Club, the All-Star Club, Champions Club, the All-American Club. All you need to do is contact the athletic department here at Georgia Highlands College and find out how you can be a season-long pass holder and sponsor of Charger Sports. Aaron pass and taken away by the Bobcats. And another foul on the floor. Wow. Uh, that was uh, Freeman got called for that one. So that's four team fouls. And Freeman's first uh, personal foul. Still not in at five here with the 3.52 mark. Good pressure by the Chargers. Gonna drive the baseline, kick it back out on the wing, far wing for a three, no good. And the Lady Chargers come down with a basketball. That's gonna be Yaz Collins. Gets it over to Princess, long three, yes! Princess Simmons from downtown. 8-5 lead now by Georgia Highlands. One of the well, sophomores drives baseline, and there's a travel on East Georgia. That's going to be uh, Strobridge, which, by the way, is like the leading three-point shooter on this basketball team. And she's uh, not even a starter. This is a deep Bobcat bench. I uh, don't think they have a single player that couldn't be a starter, Arid pass, and that's going to be an easy layup. Celeste Scott with two. And ball taken away, but she dribbles it off her heel. And that is going to be a foul on, let's see, that's going to be on Kennedy Daniels. Foul on the floor. Checking in is Shelby McGill. So the Lady Chargers, Hatton will take it out for the Chargers. Here on the near side, gets it over to Princess Simmons. They fall back in a man defense. Chargers up by one over the conference leading Lady Bobcats. Going to drive the baseline, and that is going to be, I believe, an offensive foul, an illegal pick there by Shatea Freeman. Kennedy Sneed brings the ball down for the Lady Bobcats. Dribbles to the left. Now it goes down low. Left hand layup is good by Zakira Hall, who's a freshman center. Nine eight East Georgia up top. Right now McGill with the basketball in the near wing. She gets a pick. Back over to Hatton. Six on the shot clock underneath. Hatton is smothered up, and the ball is taken away, but a reverse layup, and that's got to be good, is it? It is good. What a shot. <laughs> that was a Larry Bird behind the backboard kind of shot right there. Uh, those of you who know, yeah, you know Larry. That, I don't know, show my age. He's one of the only uh, NBA players of all time that's ever done that. Three-pointer by Daniels. I was still all excited about that reverse layup shot from underneath the basket. It's 12-10. McGill with the basketball. Somebody left the lane open for her, and she goes up and gets fouled by Sneed. Sneed. 
Lady Chargers keeping it close against the uh, conference leading Bobcats right now. She's going to go to the line and shoot. Collins comes back in for the Lady Chargers. Well, it's not going to be a shooting foul. It's going to be underneath. I wondered why they were actually lining up. Barfield got her pick, uh, pocket picked, and then there's a body's flying everywhere today. That layup is no good. Rebounds bounced around, and it's going to hit the line. I believe that is going to be... It's going to be East Georgia ball underneath. 20 seconds on the shot clock. 12 to 10 affair we got right now. 54 seconds remaining in the first quarter, and it's been a tight matchup so far. Lady Chargers have been really, they, they, they've come out pretty good here. Bobcats shot no good. That was a three, and that's going to go out and be Charger basketball. McGill gets it across over to Yaz Collins, who gets mugged. East Georgia trying to get another bucket or two. Goes up, 32 seconds, and fouled with the layup. And I believe that is going to be on, on Hatton. Barbie coming back in. Barabi, one of the sophomores that will be honored today as well. well. I missed everything on that one. You know, and that's always that's always puzzled me is, is someone that could be a really good jump shooter, um, can hit from 20 feet out, hit from 15 feet out, uh, on a jump shot on the run or whatever, but on the foul line, for some reason, they just absolutely freeze up and just have a terrible time trying to hit a free throw shot. And nobody's guarding you. Big rebound by the Chargers. Both empty for the Bobcats. 27 seconds. They break it across. Barfield, she's going to drive baseline, comes back out with it. Over to uh, back and forth. Barfield. Open, tries to get the ball away, and McClendon puts the old goalie knees to it and knocks it back. All right, excuse me, that's Hall. She tried to go through her legs, and Hall had none of that. Four seconds. Long three, and that is going to be no good. Wow, we got a tight one going here. The score, East Georgia 12, and the Lady Chargers 10. This is the Charger Sports Network. That's all the end of one. All right, back here at the corral after one. Both teams after the first buzzer are still at the bench. I guess they'll get one more. There we go. That's the mean. All right, y'all got to get out there and play. That's what that buzzer means. All right, good basketball game so far. It, it's it, well, and, and I say that, but at the same time, there's been a little bit of sloppy play on, on uh, I guess, getting in a hurry and such uh, at times too. But it's it's close, and, and quite honestly, if you can keep it within two, and you got the conference leaders here in town. Uh, you're doing a good job. And uh, if you just look at the mere size of East Georgia, they are heads, 
literally taller. Two layups missed, no good. Good defense by the Chargers. Trying to go down inside. Good block by Barbie. Wow, nice move by the sophomore. And McGill brings it across and gets, she gets a hit. And both teams are, well, they were the first, they got, both teams got a bonus in the first quarter. There, were, there was a lot of fouls in that, uh, in that stanza of play. Dismuke gets called for the foul. That's going to be two on her. Barfield at the top of the key, 16 on the shot clock, gets it over to McGill. McGill gets a screen. Going to go back over. Freeman, jumper, no good, but Barbie gets it. Princess Simmons gets it back out. McGill has it to, a, to the shoot, and that's going to go out of bounds. Gaz Collins tried to get that, uh, get that to go, but I don't think anybody wanted to shoot it. <laughs> They were passing it to the next person. <laughs> East Georgia bringing it down. Got a drive baseline. Ah, oh, got hit and a foul. That's a miss. East Georgia has not had a good afternoon at all on the foul line. There's another. I'm not sure they've hit maybe one or two, and that's been about it. Chargers break the press. And there's going to be a foul. That's going to be a push. Yeah, as Collins gets fouled. That's going to be on uh, Taylor Caldwell. Princess Simmons with the inbound. Ball taken away. Are you sure it's going to come back? And that is going to be out. And, well, I think it went off of a charger. Twenty-three on the shot clock. Jumper off the iron, no good. East Georgia with a rebound, and it goes back up. That is going to be Dismuke. Four-point lead, 14-10. East Georgia Lady Bobcats out front, McGill the far wing. She gets challenged. Yaz Collins comes back with the ball. And she's going to put it up off the window. No good. And Princess Simmons just rips it away from the rebounder. McGill off the glass. No good. Good shot at it. But I mean, had a good look at that. But that just came right, banged right off the window. Scoop layup. No good. And they get the rebound and put it back up. Now I'm putting some distance uh, to them now, which is something you need to tighten up on. But this uh, East Georgia team... Has got the height and the speed. They will slap at everything. And that three is going to be off the iron. No good. East Georgia with the rebound. Jones brings it down. Wide open underneath is Dismuke. And Chargers call a timeout. They need to talk about it. We'll be back. This is the Charger Sports Network.
All right, back here at the corral. East Georgia has all of a sudden exploded for eight unanswered points, and I like that six unanswered point, rather, but it's an eight-point lead right now. And uh, the Chargers need to try to find a recipe to slow it down just a little bit as far as uh, their scoring goes. A couple of uh, takeaways, some tenacious defense by the Lady Bobcats, and we've got a uh, body block. That is going to be on on Caldwell. I believe that is her second foul. She's had two back-to-back. -back. Bobcats have got the press on. Barfield gets it in to McGill. Over to, I believe that's Angel Simmons. She splits the defense. Boy, arms are flying everywhere. Griffin, no good. And that is going to be McGill with the basketball. And she throws it up and gets fouled. Yaz Collins was a trailer on that one. Princess Simmons comes back into the game. So with the line, it's going to be McGill, and that one misses. Wow, got to have these foul shots. The, that, that can be the difference in many, many games. I think if uh, between East Georgia and uh, the missed, I mean, it would probably be about 30 right now, but they've missed so many foul shots. It's been tough. McGill's second attempt, and that's off the rim. Good, tough defense by the Chargers, and they throw that one up off the bat. Wow, how did that go in? <laughs> that, yeah, that one was off the clock. Using all the backboard back there. Collins gets that one rejected. And another foul. There we go. Got to take it to the hoops. Baraby. Is going to go to the line to shoot two. Let's uh, let's make these count. It's a ten point game now. All of a sudden, we've gone from all tied up to we need to uh, close the floodgate right now. And that's going to help. East Georgia right now has five fouls, and that has put the Chargers in the bonus. That one comes off the back of the rim, which could be good toward the end of the second quarter. And that looked just too easy on that one. Jones with the uh, layup, and they get the steal now, and it's going to be an offensive foul against Jones. Princess is out there. She's she's been sacrificing herself today for everybody. They got 22-11. McGill with a ball. As Collins lays it in, taking it strong to the hoop. 22-13. Now we need a stop on defense. Good defense and a layup, and that's going to be good, though, but it was a good. Barbie did a great job causing that first miss. But then she gets, uh, I believe uh, he got, he, she got whistled for that one. Or is that, yep. And that one's good. So 25-13 is our score right now. And East Georgia keeps the pressure on. Princess Simmons squeezes through there. 
Back up to the top of the key. McGill for three off the backboard. No good, but charges for the rebound, and it's going to be tied up, and I believe the possession arrow will be Chargers basketball. That's why you follow your shot, folks. Simmons tried to get it in to McGill, but um, it went off of a Bobcat. And it's going to be uh, Chargers basketball right in front of the scorer's table in midcourt. Mid it's hard to get it over these tall guards. Collins goes up. No good. We come down with the rebound again. Get mugged down there. And wow, there. There's. Scratch it and clawing. Good pass interception by Simmons. He gets it out to Collins. Inside layup, McGill. That was pretty much a text play right there. Textbook play. Driving baseline, off the floater, no good. All day long, just kind of sitting right there, waiting for things to happen. Dismuke doesn't have to do whole much. Uh, that's, that's a lot of players trying to move out of the way. Just simple mismatch. McGill greens it across. Collins is going to drive off the glass. No good. Got a little rush there on that. A little intimidation. And that is going to be, wow, layup. No dribble. 27-15. McGill. And she's on the line, so it's going to be Charger basketball. And I believe we have a timeout. We do. It's a media timeout. 29-15. East Georgia has broken it open right now, but the Chargers are mounting a comeback. This is the Charger Sports Network. This is Chargers basketball. Georgia Highlands College brought to you in part by Lindell, Ace Hardware, home of Husk Barner. Husk Barner, there we go. Uh, United Community Bank, the bank that service built, Atrium Health Floyd, and Automax Rent a Car. Among our many sponsors here are the uh, Georgia Highlands Sports. And uh, stick around, I'll tell you how you could become a, another sponsor and supporter of Georgia, Char uh, Georgia Highlands Chargers Athletics. McGill with a basketball. Swing around. Princess Simmons for three. Be there. And it is. 29-18. Bobcat's going to drive lane. No good. Kick it back out from the foul line. And that's no good. They come out with a rebound. And everybody's trying to get in on the action there. Another miss. Put and Chargers try to come back with it. McGill got in there and mixed it up a little bit to try to grab the rebound. But again, you can just see the size of the players. For, I don't know, I don't know where they're getting the East Georgia <laughs> players are big. I don't know if they may be bringing them from South Carolina across the uh, across the border there. <laughs> East uh, East Georgia now near the Augusta area. And so uh, you know. All right, what? Yeah, all right, so we're, uh, we're going to the line. Unsure exactly what that call was, but um, 
I think they got, uh, yeah, McGill. Uh, uh, she's going to be at the line to shoot two because uh, they are in the, in the uh, bonus now. Everybody's lined up and ready to go. Jones, the last to get into the gate. McGill has just not had a good day. I think it's her fifth miss. And uh, she's got good form and, and a good good touch of the ball. It just, there we go. All right, McGill. 29-18. Trying to keep it close. Ball taken away by McGill. She's going to lay up and hit the deck. Wow, she just got body slammed. A cross check. That should be two minutes in the penalty box, to be honest with you. That was, that was pretty rough. McGill picks herself back up and is going to go and try to contribute a couple of points. Well, they got to let Barfield come in. There she goes. All right. Uh, Yaz, let's see. That is going to be uh, going out is Hatton. Is going to go take a breather. All right. We got everybody in. East Georgia's making subs. Complete line change, and here we go. I don't know what it is about the hockey uh, references today, but it just seems right. <laughs> We've had cross-check. That's good. All right. That one for McGill. Nine-point game now. 324 remaining in the first half. And that's good. Here comes East Georgia. Pass taken away by Princess Simmons. Over throw it. Good stop and catch there by Barfield. And there's going to be a jump ball, and this is going to be East Georgia ball. So good to see the fight in the uh, Lady Chargers this afternoon. Still staying there, hanging in there with the uh, league leading East Georgia Bobcats. Lady Bobcats are 16 and 0 this season. One down low. Now back over to the wing for three, and that's going to be good. Scott for three. Princess Simmons brings it across for the uh, Lady Chargers. Over to Yaz Collins. And that's going to be handed off to McGill, and she gets, she gets uh, clobbered underneath the basket. McClellan, or McClendon, rather, is about 6-2. Her nickname is Tree, and you can see why. Pretty dominant in the lane, that's for, that's for sure. And she's a good player, and she's uh, averaging 16 points a game, 15 rebounds as well. McGill missing that shot. East Georgia brings it back down underneath. Good defensive work and a tackle at the one-yard line. That is a so it's got a shooting foul. That's the fifth foul, so that will put the um, Lady Chargers in the bonus now. Sarah Kelly coming in now for East Georgia. That's good for McGill. She's probably been at the, the line more this game than many players have been the entire season. <laughs> I think this is a seventh trip to the line. And she makes it count. Hitting both of those. Still keeping in with a three three possession game here. Nine point lead, 32 to 23. Lady Chargers 
Gives the league leading Lady Bobcats. That floater's no good. Princess Simmons scrambles for the rebound and brings it down court. And we've got a player on the floor, and they're going to call timeout. And that's McGill. Looks like she rolled an ankle. She did. And she is hurting. That is, that's going to be a big void because McGill's been playing good today. She's been scrappy, and uh, she's going to have to go sit down. Hopefully it's not too terribly severe, and um, Amanda Moore, the trainer, can wrap her up and get her back together. But Angel Simmons is coming back in the game. Boy, it would be nice to, to get Angel hot from about three points. She's been able to rest her a lot, so maybe, maybe that's some of the game plan today, you know? So, Angel... Gets the ball from her sister, Princess. She is the younger of the uh, sisters. Back out. Wow, they got a little kickball going there between the two. Yaz Collins tries to get it back over to Angel. Seven on the shot clock, and we've got a quick timeout called by the Chargers. Don't go anywhere. we got a good one here. It's a minute 32 before half. Time on sophomore day, 32-23. Chargers are mounting a comeback. We're back here at the Corral on sophomore day here at Georgia Highlands College. Tony McIntosh with you. Glad to be here with you. It's a minute 32 to go in the first half. Chargers are trying to tighten up on this lead a little bit by uh, East Georgia. They've played them pretty tight. Pretty tough game so far. Had a little spurt the beginning of the second quarter that uh, kind of opened things up a little bit. Collins throws. Uh, that is uh, not Collins, but... Princess throwing a rainmaker on that one. Jumper no good. And Angel comes in with a atomic elbow off the rings. <laughs> Not only she meant to do that, but it's just the, just the uh, she she jumped and the ball went up. And she got got it with the elbow. So. All right, McGill's getting ready to come back in. The ankle must be feeling pretty good. Just kind of a twist. So at the line, and that one's going to go in and out. Celeste Scott. And that one's going to be good, though. It's a 10-point game now with a minute 12. East Georgia keeping this pressure on the McGill. Back in the game over to Princess Simmons. She's going to try the right side, and she does. And there's, well, she stepped on the line. Some pretty tough defense there by Sarah Kelly of the Lady Bobcats. She kind of squeezed, squeezed her over in the line and would not give up. So... Not much to, to go there. Three-pointer off the back iron, no good. And there's a scramble for the ball. Princess Simmons comes up. It's a pass to Yaz Collins. Layup is good. She could be a quarterback. A triple team, and now the pass for the near wing, no good. Three-pointer. Missed the shot again. Ball's blocked. 26 on the game clock. Eight on the shot clock. Miss again. And that's another miss. 
threw that one up, and that one goes, wow. Boy, talk about a prayer. They answered that one. Gee whiz. About six shots missed underneath the basket. Everybody's scrapping for the rebound. And then threw up a Hail Mary, and it went through. Now it's a 10-point game, 17 seconds to go. Foul shot is going to make it an 11-point game. And the Chargers would love to end this half with a bucket. A three would be nice. Inside, Barfield. Princess for three, lines it up. It's off the back iron, no good. And East Georgia comes up with a rebound and throws it out of bounds, and that's going to be our half. Wow, what a crazy half it has been. But, unfortunately, East Georgia has the lead right now going in by 11. It's 36-25 here at the Corral. It's halftime. We'll be back with more here on the Chargers Sports Network.
All right, welcome back. We're just about two minutes away from the second half of this game between the Georgia Highlands Chargers and the Bobcats of East Georgia. East Georgia State College uh, out of the Augusta area. And it has been a uh, crazy first half back and forth. A little early spurt in the beginning of the second quarter uh, is the reason for the uh, deficit right now. They scored about eight unanswered points against the Chargers, and uh, that kind of opened up the floodgates there for a minute. But uh, the uh, Chargers have been scrapping back and uh, working hard to get within 11 points right now. So at halftime, against, especially against the 16-0 uh, conference-leading Bobcats right now, it's pretty good. I tell you what, though, it's been a great afternoon for um, – Shelby McGill off the bench. She's got nine points. She's tied with uh, Princess Simmons for the most points in the first half, each having nine points, uh, followed by Yaz Collins off the bench. The bench has contributed 13 points to 12 on the starters. Also, uh, Naomi uh, Barabee with uh, Barabee, excuse me, with three points today. I think I've pronounced her name about eight different times, and I'll probably have four more pronunciations before the end of the game today. But anyway, Naomi, one of the sophomores that will be honored here today during sophomore day. As far as the uh, East Georgia Bobcats go, uh, Dismuke, Dismuke rather, with seven points. She leads the, the scoring there. Also, uh, Griffin with six. McClendon, we've held her to four. She is the conference leading scorer. I don't want to uh, erupt anything, but... Uh, I got to tell you, the Chargers have been pretty tough on her down inside today. Caldwell with four, and uh, Nia Jones with two points. As far as their bench goes, uh, Celeste Scott has contributed uh, six points. Kennedy Daniels with three, and uh, Zakira Hall with uh, two points this afternoon. So that pretty much is what the scoring looks by, uh, like as we get ready for the second half here. Uh, at the Corral. Listen, you are invited to be a part of uh, the Charger Nation and the Charger Athletic Association. Uh, better person, better student, better athlete. And uh, your opportunity to do so. You can become a member of the Charger Club, the All-Star Club, Champions Club, or the All-American Club. Uh, just simply contact the uh, athletic office here at Georgia Highlands College, and they can fill you in with all the details on how you can become a big sponsor of the uh, Georgia Chargers, uh, the Georgia Highlands Chargers Athletic. This includes uh, all sports, basketball, uh, baseball, softball, and more here at Georgia Highlands. The Chargers were going to inbound to start the second half. I got to uh, have a, f a few moments with uh, McGill right before they came back in. I said, how's your ankle? And she gave me a thumbs up. McGill's got the ball right now on the far wing. Gonna try to go inside. And wow, a little skip step there by Barfield. Mm. East Georgia brings it back across. And they start down low and add two to the tally. Princess Simmons goes right and back to the left, looking to set something up. 14 on the shot clock. McGill has it. All right, that's Yaz. Excuse me. Simmons for three. Be there. No, it's out. And what a push. And now it's three on one. Down low for an easy two. So now 15-point lead. Need a couple of stops, and that's not the way to get them. That is a good foul, I'm going to tell you. Uh, as, as much trouble as East George has had at the foul line, and I think the Chargers hope it will continue. However, I don't think I want to sacrifice uh, your trusty ball handler, Princess Simmons. With that. That's only her second foul, but... Want to try to have as much available for the fourth quarter if you need it. Uh, there you go. The prognosticators in the stands were right. A 
That is a bit of an oxymoron. That was a good foul. And then that was a very good foul. We can just come down with a rebound, and we do. Princess gets across over to Barfield. On the near side, give and go, but Mr. Target, but uh, there to pick it up is Freeman. Scoop shot, no good. That would have been nice if it had gone in. For three in the corner, and it's no good. Tie the ball up. Whoa, wow. And the ball's taken away by the Chargers. Freeman giving all the ball dribbling clinic there. Princess Simmons back over to Freeman on the far side. Now this is a game you would like to have someone like Lloyd dressed out, but she's not dressed out today. Ill-advised pass down low. Layup is no good, and the putback, though, is at a timeout for the Lady Chargers. Don't want to get it too far ahead. 42-25 right now. Don't want to let this one get out of hand. This is the Chargers Sports Network. All right, back here at the corral as a timeout by Coach Brooks there. Definitely needed that one to try to slow things down a little bit. Chargers will inbound the basketball. 42-25 is our score right now. Freeman at the point guard. A little too much dribbling. Ball got loose. And here comes East Georgia with another easy layup. And this just got ugly real fast here in the third. And we're just underway, 6.58 to go. Princess Simmons, she's going to try to baseline to get back. And the ball is taken out, and it's going to be, wow, it's going to be called out on Freeman. Freeman tried to argue. She would be a good attorney. I mean, it was a good argument there. She brought up a lot of facts that made sense, but judge was not going to have it. Scrapping for the rebound. She comes up with it, and then it's going to be it's going to be East Georgia ball. They did call it Charger basketball, but uh, it, it wasn't. <laughs> So he would, oh, loose and missed the layup. Set up for a three on the far wing, and that was a no-brainer. That one went in. This is why they're 16-0. <laughs> they will come out and attack and attack hard and break it down a little bit. Trying to stop the bleeding a little bit here. Inside, swing it around. Quickly up to Freeman at the top of the key. Back out to Princess. Back to Freeman. Nine on the shot clock. Freeman drives baseline. They cut her off. Tries to get it inside, and it's taken away. East Georgia with the numbers. 
And that is going to be a travel. That was a LeBron James travel right there. That was at least five. No, it was, it was about four sounds. It was a couple too many there. McGill comes back into the game. Got to keep that ankle loose. McGill over the far wing. Goes down inside. Nothing there. Back to McGill. She takes it up, throws it up, and a foul. That's going to be on um, McClendon. And that is only her second foul, though. But she's going to go to the bench. And is replaced by the other Twin Tower. Who was it? I believe it was the University of Houston back in the 80s. They had the uh, twi Twin Towers, either Houston, Virginia, Houston, yeah. Akeem Olajuwon and uh, what was the, who was the other? I can't remember the other tower. <laughs> well, East Georgia's got, uh, actually, I think they have a triple office complex with <laughs> six foot and higher. <laughs> it's a tower complex. This is a big team. I'm not kidding. And you can see that. Ball nearly taken away, and it is. Good D by Barfield. Princess Collins, uh, Princess uh, Simmons is bringing it across. I just gave Yaz a sister. McGill back over to Princess. Eight on the shot clock. She gets mugged. Princess turns around, throws it off the glass. No good. Rebound Bobcats. And they push it. And pass intercepted. McGill's going to go and a foul. Caldwell was right there to stop her. McGill tried to split the difference and gets decked. And East Georgia brings in a couple of uh, reserves. Coming back in is going to be Sneed. And uh, is a timeout. 4.37 to go in the, fir in the uh, third quarter. East Georgia's kind of broken this open a little bit. But the Chargers are determined to make a comeback. 47-26. This is the Chargers Sports Network. Charger basketball brought to you in part by Alarm Systems at Go Fire Protection, Country Inn and Suites, Sonovas, and Rome Orthopedic Center. Just a few of the supporters of Georgia Highlands Athletics. And that's an easy bucket there. That was an interesting setup. It was a good trick play. I had them all spread out. And there is going to be, let's see. Clock is uh, getting, getting crazy here. There was a shot clock issue, and they had to reset it. All right, 24 on the shot clock, 4.31 to go. 47-28. East Georgia Lady Bobcats inside. Turn around, no good. Block shot. Scrappy Chargers are trying what they can to keep them off the board. It's got to go get a rebound, and that's going to be 
an over-the-back offensive foul. I think, well, no. What? I thought it was a, I'm not sure what they, it wasn't a foul. I thought it was an over-the-top foul. I'm not sure what they, uh, oh, got, okay, got the, uh, all right. Got the clock, so, okay, that uh, was a bound. Francis Simmons to McGill, left side, no good. Ball's bounced around and knocked out of bounds by East Georgia. So this is going to be East Georgia basketball. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Highlands basketball. Princess Simmons is going to inbound. And that's going to be out, and it's going to be charged basketball. All right, Simmons going to try this again. 18 on the shot clock. And that's going to be good for two. McGill gets it back out to Princess Simmons at the top. And all the dribbling and just lost the handle of it. And this is going to lead to another easy bucket by East Georgia. And that's going to be a foul on... Okay, that's going to be a foul on, uh, I believe, Daniels. Yaz comes back, in, back into the game, and um, Barfield's going to have a breather. Also, well, actually, Barfield's coming back in. Barbie is uh, one. Actually, I think she was initially supposed to go out and start with McGill. Nice move with that ankle, and it just gets knocked away, and that's going to be uh, East Georgia basketball. Uh, this entire team, you have uh, a team of freshmen, only th uh, three sophomore on this uh, lineup here. And so it's basically an all-freshman team against a few more experienced. That three is, that one just hurt. <laughs> Pretty shot, but it hurt. Yaz. Good give and go, Hatton. Good pass by Yaz Collins with the assist. 54-30. 234 to go in the third quarter. And a good steal by Princess. Initiated a turnover. And a little bit of trouble, and they do get it across. Open down below is Collins. Rushed, but we come back with it. McGill hits the ground, and it's going to be a tie-up. And that's going to be East Georgia basketball, I believe. Excuse me, is there? No, we got a timeout. We've got a timeout on the floor. We'll take one here, too. Crazy ending uh, third quarter of this game, too. It just kind of picked up with the second quarter left. We'll be back with more Charger basketball.
All right, back here at the Corral, George Islands College, Fort Campus, where the uh, Lady Chargers are taking on the Lady Bobcats, who are 16-0 in the conference, and they have kind of shown that why they are this afternoon. They have a broken it wide open here in the third. Princess Simmons, gonna go inside, back to McGill on the near wing. And she's gonna throw it up, and it's gonna go off the rim. Rebound, East Georgia. Down low, shot's no good. Princess Simmons with the rebound. For a four foot 11, she has come down with a lot of boards today. Angel Simmons back into the game. She's going to try to drive inside a little bit, lose some footing. Gets it over to Barfield. And that shot back out to Angel. Angel's going to drive. She gets stopped. It's going to be a, a travel. I don't know. Angel's wearing a, a knee sleeve. I don't know if she's got a, a bum knee or something. I, I, maybe I haven't noticed that. Uh, if she's had it on all season or not, but oh, it may be giving her some problems and she's just not uh, as agile as she normally is. That is going to be a foul on Hatton. Barabee comes back in for Robbie. Naomi, one of the sophomore, and it is a minute three to go here in the uh, third quarter. Add one. You know, there's been a few games where the uh, Lady Chargers have been down by a lot, and they have come back with some incredible play in the fourth quarter. And I can think of a few instances. They, were, they came up a couple of points short, but uh, they were they played some scrap. They played to the end, definitely. And nothing says that can't happen today. It's a Simmons. It's going to be called for a push off. So she gets an offensive foul. And, well, is it, was it Princess or? I think it was Princess because we do not have an 11 on there. The uh, foul board is not operating right now. As the, the player. And. Well, it's going to be uh, Highlands basketball. Princess just grabbed the basketball and, and ripped it right out of the arms of the uh, East Georgia player. 19 on the shot clock. Sneed down, takes it down low. Kind of a back door to uh, Kelly. Or excuse me, that was uh, Paris Smith with the bucket. Angel, off the window, no good. And there's a collision down low. It's going to be, nobody knows whose ball it is. Both officials look at each other. We have no idea. We got three uh, East Georgia players on the ground. And it's going to be uh, Highlands basketball. Angel Simmons at the top. She's going to drive the lane. Back to McGill for three. Be there. Off the window, no good. She almost had a seat in the front row. Here comes Sneed with a basketball. Lays it up, misses. Put back is good though. And that's going to be the end of the third quarter. Well, it's a 30 point deficit and we'll see what the Chargers have in them. Could it be? I don't know, it'd be one of the greatest comebacks in college basketball probably. We'll be back with the fourth quarter here on the Charger Network.
All right, we're ready to start the fourth quarter here at the Corral, Georgia Highlands College. Our buddy River, he's been working the concession stand today. Normally he's up here with me, but uh, I think he and his sisters twitch places. Was, River's working concession stand duty today. He's uh, going back and forth. Uh, he's, he's doing a lot, a lot of stuff going on. We've got the new assistant, Colton, here today with us on the broadcast. So, you know, we're starting these young broadcasters out at an early age. Teaching them the finer points about what not to do. All right, back here. Angel Simmons is going to take it up, throws it up, and is fouled. So I believe it was um, McClellan that got uh, whistled for that one. Well, no, actually, they're going to call it on Hall. The, the other big down low, 34. That's her third foul. Angel has been very silent today. Yeah, and that, uh, her shot's been off a little bit. She's fifth in the conference in scoring. But uh, she's just had a rough day of it today. Um, really, that finally getting on the uh, scoreboard, I believe. She might be playing a little bit injured today. One down low, long three, no good. Rebound, but tip right back to them. And they miss it again, and Princess just snatches the ball away. And brings it across. Angel for three. Long one. Be there. Yes. Here we go. A couple of stops and about seven more of those. We'll be in business. And that is going to be a block on, well, let's see, Angel Simmons is going to be called for that block. And she is going to immediately go out. Yaz Collins. Well, we got four players on the floor, and let's see, was it uh, was it Yaz when she walked on the floor? Because I know she didn't say anything to anybody. Um, I think she came in before, because Angel was uh, Angel definitely got something happening with her. Uh, physically because she just went wincing off. So that's going to be a technical. Yeah, it's going to be a technical on Yaz Collins before just walking on the floor before she was waved in. And yeah, that is a no-no. But with this uh, free throw shooting the ability of uh, some of these players at East Georgia, either they're really off their game or they've just been very fortunate this year to <laughs> Go because it's not been great at the line. There's nobody around there. Even the even their coach is laughing. That uh, come on. And there you go. That's two. I know who's going to be shooting free throws next week at practice. <laughs> and Angel is out. She fouled out. That was her fifth foul. Well, yeah, she had three going into the halftime. So yeah. Oh, she's going to the locker room. Well, she's going to the locker room. All right. Gave her dribble up and didn't have anything to do with it. Princess Simmons fighting for it and it is going to be East Georgia basketball. East Georgia gets the ball in. 
Thought about a three, now they're gonna take it. Oh Lord. Now they're just pouring the salt in the wound right now. That's. But it is tournament time coming up, so you know. Trying to drive the baseline, get it out around. Yaz Collins for three, be there. Off the iron, no good. McGill tried to get the rebound, but she got, she got pushed out. Princess Simmons comes up with a steal. And it's gonna be a foul on East Georgia. Foul on Caldwell. I gotta tell you, Princess Simmons has really taken it one for the team today, man. She has been in there scrapping for every rebound and also says put herself out there uh, going after balls, more steals. And has been at the right place at the right time. She is going to go out of the game right now. She's got a, a bit of an injury on her finger, so she's going to have that attended to by, by the trainer. As Freeman comes back in at point guard, she does a pretty good job of that. Gets it over to McGill. McGill at the top. 15 on the shot clock. And the pocket got picked. And an easy two for Caldwell. Barfield out front. Gets it over to McGill. Freeman went down low and it's going to be out of bounds. And is it going to, be, well, thought it was going to go uh, Chargers away, but no. East Georgia down low and the pass is taken away by Freeman. She's going to push it up to Collins. Yes, yeah, Collins off the right side, good. East Georgia moving around, long three. And a foul and three-point attempt. Sixty-five thirty-six is our score. East Georgia just uh, putting it on, pouring it on. Scott checks back in. Princess Simmons comes back in. It gives uh, Barfield a breather. Sophomore uh, acknowledgement and appreciation coming up right after this game. Bounce pass to Yaz. Just misses the layup. Intimidation factor is, uh, is very prevalent. Turnaround jumper, little hook shot, no good. And that's gonna be a foul. I believe that's gonna be on Freeman. Got her on the arm, so, so McClendon is gonna to go to the line. Hatton will check back in for the Lady Chargers. Games like this, you just gotta you gotta you gotta finish strong the best you can and, and try to keep your composure. Uh, it's it's a tough climb if it can be done at all, but uh, you can't just start getting you know taking wild desperate shots and things of that nature. Even though it is it's human nature to do that, but you've got to compose yourself a bit. Both of those go in. McGill brings it across. Yaz Collins hands it off to Princess Simmons. As Collins is wide open. She was so wide open, she just lost the handle of the basketball. That was one of those that was right there for you and she just got nervous and that's gonna lead to an easy basket. East Georgia. 
Yeah, I've been on the other. I've been on the losing end of games like this myself, and it is pretty a pretty aggravating. No matter what you try to do, nothing happens. Bounce pass going to go in. Ball taken away, and East Georgia is just going to keep exploiting. That's about the fourth easy layup in this segment here. They've gone unanswered. McGill at the top of the key. Trying to get something going here. Ball taken away again. Uh, but she missed the layup. Put back, and that's no good. Wow, nobody can get a handle of the balls. Long three. Are you kidding me? Wow. McGill throws it up and is blocked, rejected. But it's taken away by Freeman. Simmons is wide open. And yes, there we go. Hatton with the layup. Coming up on Wednesday, the uh, Lady Chargers will be at home against Central Georgia Tech, and then they'll end the season on the road on the 9th next Saturday against Andrew College down in Culberth, Georgia. And then they head to, uh, I believe they have the GCAA tournament, and that's going to be uh, offensive foul. And there's a timeout. Oop, we'll take a timeout right here, too. It's a media timeout. 4.01 to go. This is the Charger Sports Network. All right, we're back here at the corral as we uh, wrap things up here. About four minutes to go here in the game. Tony McIntosh with you, and actually, this I think this will be the uh, the final one for me. I believe uh, Danny's going to be finishing the season out. I have classes starting back up. I have to teach class next week. <laughs> I can't do the week games. All right, here we go. Trying to get something going here. Highlands with seven players right now. Bounce pass, no good, but it's Hatton tries to take it away and scraps for it without trying to foul somebody. Little jumper, it's going to be good. No good, no, it's off the knee. And Georgia Highlands will get the ball back. Listen, with the, guy, with the players on the floor right now, you've got, to give them, you've got to give them credit because they are really playing hard. They're tired. You know that. All right. Barfield back. Gets it over to Princess Simmons. Yaz Collins is going to drive, and she gets hammered. That was a hard foul. It was just uh, going for the ball, and she got a lot of arm on that too, but, you know. It's going to go to the line for two. Let's see if we can cut in a little bit. I know it is way late in the game, but do what you can do, and that's going to hit the back iron. All right, the uh, official giving the uh, East Georgia 
actually everybody on the line a warning. You're not to, you're not supposed to do that uh, at, at the line. Unless you're calling, I guess calling a play or something like that. But uh, during the foul shot, it's it's a little it's had a little different. Razzing the uh, shooter is not a, a, a acceptable behavior. Layup floater is good. Princess brings it across. Three off the iron, no good. Rebound, East Georgia. Look away pass, it's missed. And here come the Chargers. Yaz Collins lays it up and in. Seventy-eight forty-one. Long three, no good. I had a post player shooting a three. They're just out as garbage time now for them. So the uh, two put back is good, and the coach lot got taken out on that one. <laughs> So they've lost the ball now. It's in the stands, and no one wants to give it up. There we go. Well, they've got it. It's not like baseball. You can't keep the baseball. you got to give the basketball back. <laughs> oh, only in arena football can you keep the ball if it goes in the stands. That's a wild sport. This is close to it today. It's going to be out of bounds, and it's going to be East Georgia ball. McGill's coming back into the game. He's going to have to ice that ankle because this thing is bigger than a softball uh, probably tomorrow morning when she wakes up. Down low, offensive foul. As Hatton or as Barfield just kind of gets uh, taken across the floor. McGill brings it across. Yaz Collins trying to make some way there. Back out, 11 on the shot clock. She's going to drive and is fouled, a block. And going to go to the line to shoot two. First shot, it is going to bounce off the back of the rim and in. 80-42. That one's no good. And East Georgia comes down with the rebound. Stay tuned after the game. We're going to have the uh, carry the sophomore appreciation salute uh, after this game for the uh, women's team. That one bounced off the back rim and in. McGill over to Collins. Yes, gives it the Princess. And nearly taken away, but Princess comes up with it. Yeah, it's open on the far corner for a three, and it's off the front iron. Side iron, rather. No good. And they get the rebound. Layup, and that's going to go in. Wow. 
winding down seconds here at the corral. Pretty tight game up until about the uh, mid-second quarter. Halftime looked like it was promising, and then all of a sudden East Georgia just kind of broke open. Three off the iron, no good. And that's going to be Princess Simmons with the basketball. She's going to try to stick it out to McGill again. She's going to take a jumper, and that two is going to go in. 84-44. And now it's just kind of academic. And I can't believe she took a layup with three seconds to go in the game, and they're up by 40. That's kind of what happened. Well, anyway. <laughs> All right, that's going to be the end of the game. And uh, stick around, stay close, because we have a special ceremony for our sophomores. A tough afternoon for our Lady Chargers, but we're going to turn it over to our public address announcer, Doug Walker, right now. Number five. 